Hey YouTube, today I'm going to be doing an unboxing of the AMD Radeon RX 7900 XTX. So this is going to be the reference card made by AMD Edition. Even though it has a Sapphire uh, box, I mean, it's still the reference card. So it's the made by AMD Edition. Um, that is one thing that is worth uh, differentiating this between an actual Sapphire custom cooled card, which would be the Nitro, um, which is completely different and that is not made by AMD. Um, but today we're going to be looking at the reference card. We're going to be unboxing this. We're going to talk a little bit about it um, and then kind of go from there. So it has a sapphire seal sticker here. So let's get this thing out of here. So this card is kind of still hard to track down. Now I know it's probably going to be in very short supply because there's a lot of... Uh, having to swap these via RMA for ones that are not affected by that vapor chamber issue. Um, but this could potentially be affected by the vapor chamber uh, problem that's been kind of perme permeating through the internet recently. So you get a Sapphire graphics card, quick installation guide. And then this is kind of what you get in the box. So. It does have, it does, the box, the packaging on this one, um, it is typical Sapphire packaging, so the the plain box, uh, recycle box that they have, and then this is that classic Sapphire uh, bag that it comes in. Um, but even though it is Sapphire, or it is being distributed via Sapphire and the retail channel, um, this is a made by AMD card. So the way you can tell, if your card looks like this, it's an AMD reference card. If it doesn't look like this, then it is probably an AIB card, assuming it's a 7900 XTX. So just kind of looking at it overall, it does definitely feel heavier than the 7900 XT reference card. It looks longer as well. You can see dual 8-pin, um, nice back plate here on the back. It's all metal. This is a full metal shroud, for those wondering. It does have some RGB lighting. The default is white. You can change that via the Cooler Master uh, app that's on the driver download page. So this cooler, the vapor chamber, the heat sink, and the fans are all made by Cooler Master. Well, the fans are sourced from, I think, Delta, but the shroud, the aluminum fin stack, and the vapor chamber that the reference card uses is made by Cooler Master, so they're the ones who have been doing the referenced coolers for AMD for a number of years, and then the card itself is assembled by PC Partner. Um, so, and then if it's sold from AMD.com, it's gonna be through Digital River, that's the distributor, and then if it's sold anywhere else, like Newegg or somewhere, um, that's typically gonna be sold via the partner. So in this case, Sapphire, this card comes from Newegg.com. We've got DisplayPort 2.1, USB-C, DisplayPort 2.1, uh, and then you have an HDMI uh, 2.1, I believe. So, I'm not a big fan of the USB-C output. I would have preferred triple DisplayPort and one HDMI. I think that's my favorite configuration. Um, but, you know, cards like the Red Devil have that display output config, so um, that's really good. You do have, uh, if you were gonna mount this like in an OEM system, they do have the screw hole mounts here on the front. So overall, um, it is a pretty substantial card in terms of the density, the weight of it. Just to kind of compare it to the 7900 XT reference card, this one definitely feels lighter in the hand. Um, just to kind of show you guys side by side. Let's see, it's a little bit taller. And if we are to stand them up, I don't know if that one's going to stand up, but if you look at it here, you can see it's a little bit taller as well. So that's it for the unboxing. Let's go ahead and install it. Okay, how to install a graphics card. So in this case, we're installing the Reference 7900 XTX. So this is a two slot, so you're going to want to make sure you line it up with the PCI uh, slot there. And you just kind of line it up. Put it in, and that will click in, and there you go, you hear the click. So that's the clip underneath. 
Then you're going to want to put these two screws on here and plug in the power cables. And that's pretty much it. Kind of just route those cables however and that should be it now we're going to go and plug it in plug everything back in on the computer side and make sure everything's working all right so the first boot let's turn it on and you can see i'll show you guys the underside here so you can see how it lights up. I really wish that they would have just made the Radeon logo light up. That is kind of disappointing. It's at such a weird angle that if it looks like it's meant to be mounted vertically, strangely enough. So that's kind of weird, um, but uh, it looks like we're good. So we're going into Windows. All right, so once you're in, you're booted up into Windows and you've got the drivers installed or updated, um, so you want to check in Radeon settings, you can see here, if you go to the settings, and then you can see AMD Radeon RX 700 XTX, primary discrete. If we go to hardware details, notice here it says built by AMD. So like I was saying earlier, um, even though it shipped in a box with the Sapphire logo on it, and if you look at the sticker on the card, it does say Sapphire with the serial number info. Um, it is the made by AMD, built by AMD. So this is probably the easiest, I guess, the most foolproof way to understand if you have a made by AMD reference card, go into Radeon settings, click the little gear icon in the upper right. So right up there, that gear icon, you click that, that's gonna bring you to this page. And you just click on expand where it says hardware details built by AMD. So this is an AMD reference card, even though it shipped with a Sapphire box. So this is exactly the same as if I were to have purchased one of these from like AMD.com. Um, and then you can also ch verify from GPU-Z. GPU-Z is a very good tool at showing things like the BIOS version and the driver version and all that kind of stuff and to verify what the PCI Express interface is running at. So this is a 4.0 and we're running at the full X16 lanes. But right there, sub-vendor, AMD, slash ATI. So like, this is definitely an AMD reference card. If this was the Sapphire Nitro, the sub-vendor would say Sapphire here. And in uh, in the in the BIOS or in the in Radeon settings, it would not say built by AMD. If this was a Sapphire Nitro, it would say powered by AMD. Same thing with the Red Devil, as I've shown in my Red Devil uh, overview and unboxing video. So Next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to like stress test it to make sure the temperatures are good and that's going to be it. Um, the other thing that I'll say is for those who run multi-monitor, um, you're going to want to turn off zero RPM mode. So you go to performance, tuning, and see where it's the default, resizable bars enabled. So I'm going to go to custom over here and fan tuning, I'm going to enable fan tuning, zero RPM Enable, we're going to disable this, and then we're going to apply the change. And now the fan will spin all the time. Um, ideally, what AMD needs to do to fix this, uh, or I guess improve this, because this is technically a feature, this isn't really a bug. Um, a lot of people have been calling it a bug, but it's actually the way it behaves when, a mon when the monitors have high refresh. Um, because So in this example, I'm running three different displays. One is a 4K monitor, and then I have two 1440p monitors on the sides. So you can see this one's 1440, the middle one is 4K, so and so on. So under advanced settings in Windows, maybe I should zoom out more so that people can see. So you can see the Sony InZone M9 has a refresh rate of 144, and that's a 4K monitor. It's a 10-bit uh, depth monitor as well. And then the Agon AOC monitor is uh, 144 hertz, 1440, and then we have a third one, so another one like this. So these are three 144 hertz. This is like worst case scenario for the graphics card because the vertical panel has a blanking 
uh, refresh interval, and I'm pretty sure these two monitors, the Sony and the Agon, have different blanking intervals, so their behavior is going to be different. That's going to force the VRAM clock to always run at the maximum 3D speed, as opposed to down clocking to the 2D speed. If you have a single 60 Hz monitor connected, you will notice that your idle power is typically what you would expect it to be, around, you know, like 20 watts or less or something. So, the only way I can see them fixing this is they need to do what NVIDIA does, which is introduce secondary and maybe like an intermediate memory speed that's less than max, but greater than like the full 2D idle speed, somewhere in the middle so that the power consumption is lower. Because really the reason why it's consuming so much power is because the memory is clocked so high all the time. So that's kind of a feedback for me on what I think they need to do to fix it. Um, basically do what NVIDIA did years ago, and I think that's going to be the answer to that. So, that is how to handle the temperature, the high idle temp. Now, I honestly, I don't think this is good enough. So what I'm going to do here, customize this fan profile. So I'm just probably going to go down here, and here's 62. I'm going to take this line, and I'm going to drag this up ever so slightly. And apply that change and see what that does to the fan profile. Okay, that, that actually doubled the fan speed. So that will probably drop this down into the 40s, because that's, that's what I want it to do. So anyway, guys, that's going to be it for how to tune the graphics card for every day, 24-7 use. We're not undervolting, we're not overclocking, we're not going to mess with any of that. Um, we're, we're just going to tune the fan profile a little bit so that the idle temperatures are lower. Uh, we will test stability on 3D clocks in another video. So I hope you guys found this video useful, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.